The person who holds the record for the longest time surviving an avalanche is a Sami man. He survived being buried for 10 days. The second longest survivor holds not even one day. This has been studied and recorded as to how this was even possible. To begin, he was wearing traditional Sami clothing, mostly reindeer leather and fur that is inherently waterproof, homemade leather boots filled with shoe grass, a summer grass that grows near rivers that kept his feet insulated and warm. He had been hunting and had three ptarmigan grouse on him. He had to eat them raw over this period. His left leg was completely cemented in place, but a little luck was involved, and he had movement in one arm and an air pocket near his face. He'd only ever been to the cinema once in his life, and that movie ticket was in his pocket, of which he was able to place on the end of his ski pole and thrust upwards out of the snow for someone to hopefully find. Ten days later, they found him. We have our wood, the fire, reindeer skin, all under branches, make it softer. They know how to do it. Because you're going to stay here and it's very nice that you will feel home and it, that you're comfortable. And so we have a fire keeper, we have a kitchen leader, we have a bathroom leader. I call the bathroom. <laughs> we were so lucky to find Yungal Svoni, a Sami wisdom keeper who connected us with Siri and her family, who still herd reindeer in Sapmi, a region 300 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. They set up a lava for us next to the reindeer herd, where we will spend the next four days learning about Sami culture. Part of our aim is full immersion, if only for a few days, to connect as deeply as possible with this land, its people, creatures, each other, and ultimately ourselves. And that's the mother that it's with? All of our travels bring us to places for a reason, and you never know what intricate detail might help you through your current situation whether it's how a culture has persevered through subjugation or a simple symbiotic relationship between an animal and a plant. I'm realizing on this trip how stressed I've been at home. Like stressing about figuring out my next moves and what to do, where to go. Yeah. yeah. So being here and just embracing the silence and not doing much is like was actually a need I didn't know I knew I had. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny we all just came here and just like <laughs> slept. <laughs> <laughs> like slept in the sun. Yeah. And they were like, you could take a reindeer skin and go out and lie in the moss. I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real thing. <laughs> really? Travel is not just an observational exercise, it's a participatory one. Even if you are just visiting a major site like the Eiffel Tower, you are part of the throngs of people that each person will remember about visiting that place. So the question is, how can we be the best traveler? With this in mind, connection was an integral aspect behind each action we took. We brought gifts for the family, we contributed a couple hours of work, we ate the local food, drank the water and listen to cultural music, which helped us literally become part of the place. You know, one more learning that I got from this whole experience with life. Life is mostly about the choices that we make for, for ourselves and for the universe at large. 
you know, the, the live encounters and, you know, just, just silently observing the nature and how it works, you know, so selfless and, you know, dynamic at the same time and how it listens to human energy, uh, the connections that we made uh, during the trip, during the experience, sitting in front of the fire, they were really deep and it's going to remain within me forever and just the awareness you know just say the, the awareness of what's going on with different tribes different cultures in itself plays a very big role in preserving the knowledge the wisdom that's been passed on since generations it was it was truly a sacred way of knowing the country, experiencing the country, and it's it's long-lasting. It's not just like, you know, you know, you just go to a place and you're done. It's, it's something that remains within you and it becomes a part of you. Ah, it was, it was magical. It was purely magical. <laughs>